welcome to episode 19 of the Sheep and Cheerful podcast. My name is Nikki, I am your host and CEO and I will be chattering to you for the next probably only about 20-30 minutes or so uh, about my love of crafting and creativity and my endeavours to be as cheerful as you can be as you go through your day-to-day life in this very sunny, sunny part of the south coast of the United Kingdom today. So we are in September. Wow, welcome September. I love September. Um, I've just realised again, I haven't said where you can find me. I'm getting better at this, but uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram and on Ravelry as Clara Pegatty. I will put all the details of where you can find me, the Ravelry group and all the other stuff in the description box below. So I'm not going to go through putting it all up on the screen. I'll put it all in at the end and then it's a sort of a central point of reference for everybody. And as I was saying, I come to you from the south coast of the UK. It's bright, but it's definitely autumnal. There is definitely a feeling of autumn in the air which, oh, I love, I love autumn. I think it's probably my favorite season. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've been going out with the dogs and, you know, starting to crunch the leaves underfoot. The blackberries are all out and bursting, um, bursting over the pavement where the birds have got them, of course. Our back garden, we have an oak tree, so all the acorns are starting to drop which is lovely, although both the dogs eat acorns. Now some of you are probably gonna be horrified and say, oh no, they're poison. They've been eating the acorns ever since we moved here. What are you gonna do? But it's like they go out there, they're like little piggies truffling and they sort of go and then they sit there and crunch them and it's like, oh really? I suppose it could be worse, couldn't it? And you can make acorn coffee, can't you? So I figure, you know, They're not generally poisonous to mammals. (laughs) If they are, it's too late now. Um, No, I did check it all out way back, so don't worry. I'm not that uh, callous. And I know Tina's watching this, who is like the doggie's human grandma. So yes, I do look after them, I promise. Anyway, back on track. So yes, we are into autumn at the weekend. I watched You've Got Mail, which is oh, just wonderful, wonderful. I I feel like it's an autumn movie, even though it goes throughout the year um, in the story, it begins in autumn and it just sets you up and it talks about bouquets of sharpened pencils and things like that, which I think I probably talked about in my vlog last year, although that would have been November. But anyway, it's got me totally well and truly set up for the autumn and of course I am now back to school. I have gone back to school. My Um, first study module started yesterday so what you can't see is this desk do you remember last week I said it was an absolute mess of crafting it's now a mess of um, academic work and books and notebooks (laughs) and things I made a start yesterday uh, which was great I couldn't wait to get going so yeah everything is kicking off rather nicely at the moment so, first of all, let's let's address the big elephant in the room, and it's much prettier than an elephant because I am wearing a finished object. Ta-da! Da-da-da-da. Literally hot off the needles this morning. This morning, I finished the last bit of ribbing on this sleeve because I really wanted to share it with you. Um, I love this. This is the Jupiter Crop sweater by Caitlin Hunter who is known as Boyland Knitworks and this was also fondly known as my chicken sweater because it was the sweater that Caitlin Hunter designed based on the feather pattern of one of her chickens so let's just show you there's the picture obviously she did hers in a chicken color and obviously I didn't do mine in a chicken color Um, but I absolutely love this. So I'm going to stand up and show you. I have made it, it's pretty cropped and I don't have the most stylish of trousers on, so please forgive me, but you know, keeping it real. 
Okay. So if I go back here, so you can see, it comes to, actually my natural waist is about there. So I am a bit all bust, but I'm planning on wearing probably, certainly over fitted uh, leggings or jeans or a dress. In fact, it's probably better over a dress to be honest. Um, or if I wear it with trousers, I'll wear a longer uh, t-shirt underneath um, to show it off. But you can see, if I turn around, you get a nice back view. There. So I could have made it longer, but I did want it cropped with a view to, I want to make some high-waisted skirts or some of my little dresses. Um, so I thought, actually, let me get central again. This was the right length. So I am absolutely thrilled with this. The fit is brilliant. It's not blocked yet, because literally as I said, it's hot off the needles. Um, only half the ends are sewn in because I did that this morning while I was chatting to a friend. But um, I think, oh, just perfect. I couldn't be more happy with it. So the details of this, um, because I did, this is the one that I played around with, with the gauge, if you remember. So the yarn I've used, I've talked about this loads before, so I won't go into loads of details, but I used Wonderland yarns. I had a set of, um, they're not mini skeins really, but they were kind of mini, it's sport weight. And if you remember, they, they sell them, have a look on Fig Tree Yarns in the Channel Islands, um, Jersey Channel Islands. Uh, they've got a few in. I think they're discontinuing them though. They certainly don't have this set anymore. Um, but they do a pack of five uh, minis of sport weight. Um, such beautiful colours. And these were all speckled. I've left the actual leftover skeins in the other room. Um, but I have showed you loads of times before. So I had a set of those. I forgot, didn't I, in the introduction to mention Honey and Henry, and clearly, there's Honey. They were feeling left out. Henry's under the desk and he's just decided to chew on his bone, and Honey wanted to come in and see what all the fuss was about. <laughs> so, honey, you starred last week, didn't you? And you're a good boy. Yeah, Henry's under the desk. Um, so yes, Wonderland Yarns, it's a sport weight sweater. No, 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 knitwear, get down. Yes, I love you. Um, it's a sport weight sweater. So Wonderland Yarns are the colors, the different colors. And then the main color, which is this French blue, is from Swans Island. It's Swans Island Merino, sport weight. Again, I bought this from Fig Tree Yarns in the Channel Islands. Um, and it took me just over one skein of this blue and then the rest of the colorways it took me all of the minis and I did buy two top up skeins of the colorways so the colorways I topped up w were this blue hang on, this blue here because I love this and I knew I would need more than what was um, in the mini and then instead of repeating this grey, I bought a separate skein of this purple, which is the Wartlebury colourway. And that's obviously repeated on the sleeves. So I did fiddle around with the colours, but of course you can do that too. You can use, you can use um, odds and ends, and we don't tend to have minis of sport weight in the UK, do we? But you could um, work out the gauge difference and use fingering weight, or you could do DK. And you don't have to stick to the just the five colours. I mean, I've added in a different one. So, and again, really pleased with it. Now, looking at gauge, if you remember way back when I cast on, and I can't remember when that was, I have my card, my card over there. Just a sec. My, um, ah. There it is. Sorry, once again, my record card with my multicolored chicken on there. I started this, uh, oh, 31st of May. And if you remember, I had a break from doing this because I was knitting on the 
um, Curious Handmade Stillness Shawl, the Mystery Knit Along. So I put this down. So it hasn't taken me that long. It's just that I had sort of a month and a half away from it. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so the pattern calls for the gauge and the yarn it just wasn't, it just wasn't happening to me, for me, not to me. So um, I want to try and make this, I have vaguely talked about this before and now of course the one sheet that I needed was here. Page one, where is page one? Page one is not here. I've got all the pages. Page one, okay, apologies for that. So yes, they, uh, she uses actually a uh, Retrosaria Vovo, Portuguese, Perch, Portuguese wool, Portuguese wool, and five different colors. And the gauge she asks for is 20 stitches on 3.75 millimeter needles. Now that's a really big gauge for me and I know that the Portuguese wool that she uses is going to be one that is, I don't know if it's wool and spun, but certainly it's going to be poofy. It's going to be a bit like the um, Norwegian yarn that I knit my flea cardigan in and I'm trying to think of the name of that, it escapes me. I've got a whole load of it sitting up in my stash, but anyway. Because a more like a Shetland wool, it really blooms and it really falls out. Whereas um, both of these yarns I've used are superwash and they are merino. So you're not going to get that gauge with um, the 3.75 millimeter needles. So I faffed around, couldn't, I could not get gauge and I really wanted to do these colors. So what I did, I calculated up. So the gauge I got, I got 24 stitches per 4 inches instead of 20 stitches. So I looked at the um, the measurements and the stitch count for the bigger sizes and I went up two sizes. So instead of knitting a size 4, which is what I would have done to get my 43 and a half inch bust, I actually went up to size 6 and at my gauge it worked out to give me, as you can see, perfect fitting sweater. I was so relieved. I was so relieved. I was, the maths, the maths worked. The maths was logical to me um, because, yeah, I worked out here at a gauge of six stitches per inch. If I wanted to get a um, 44 inch bust, I do apologize, Henry is now scratching. Um, I needed, the at the fullest point of the bust, I needed bet around about 264 stitches. So I looked along the measurements at this point of the sweater, uh, along the stitch count, to find what size gave me 264 stitches, and then that was the size that I knitted. I hope you've got all that, but it worked. It works, so it just goes to show that if a little bit of maths, nothing too complicated, it's just proportions. It's just working out that if they're if they're working out that you've got four stitches per inch, say, no, five stitches per inch, and you're actually coming up at six stitches per inch, you can just work out how many stitches you need to get your measurement. Clear as mud. <laughs> I'm sure you probably know what I mean. Anyhow, I am, as I said, I am so pleased with this. It is quite on the short side, but my plan is to wear it over dresses. And uh, talking of dresses, that gives us a nice segue um, away from knitting into dressmaking. I have some more knitting to show you, but seeing as um, I mentioned the whole uh, dressmaking thing. I want to share with you progress I've made on my Betty dress, which is a pattern from Sew Over It. I think I said, I didn't show it to you last time because I hadn't got the zip in or anything like that. Well, this weekend I managed to get the zip in. I'd had to um, buy a concealed zipper foot to put the concealed zip in. Now, I have only ever used a normal zip foot when I've been sewing, but I decided I was gonna do it proper 
and so at the weekend, sadly, I didn't get to finish the dress. Life interfered, particularly Hannah and Gilbert. Uh, I had to go up and help Hannah look after Gilbert while she was cleaning out his cage. So the sewing got put to one side, but I got the zip in and I do want to show you. So I'm going to um, bring my mannequin over, Agatha, and just show you the zip because I'm so pleased with that. Okay, so here we have Agatha, my mannequin as she looks beautiful and here we have progress on my Betty dress. Now the sleeves are not, it's, it's looking a little bit high actually because the sleeves are not yet so I have still, there you go, I've still got to put the facing, the front facing in there. Um, I've done, obviously the skirt is attached but if we spin her round, can you see the zip? No, you can't because it's concealed. <laughs> I am so thrilled with this. This is my invisible zip. And the waistband oh, is about two millimetres out of each side. So that's not too bad either. So just to prove it's there and I'm not fooling you. There is my zip and I chose a red one. I couldn't, I couldn't find a decent match for this sort of mustardy, you know, golden turmeric kind of colour. So, oh, sorry, I thought someone was coming to the door then. So I decided to opt for red. Um, I had a red or a brown and Hannah helped me choose the red. And, but as it happens, it is beautifully concealed in any event. So you don't actually see that zip. Oh, I cannot tell you how chuffed I am about that. So I'm so glad. The concealed zip footer, oh my goodness, talk about making life easy. It really did make life a heck of a lot easier putting this zip in. So I am really, really pleased. And I tried it on and it just fits. It's the bomb. So I cannot wait now to get, um, you can see it's got a V back, but I need to put the whole of the, the top yoke facing in. And I'm thinking the sleeves obviously will need a binding of some sort. But then Betty, look, she's all rucked. Sorry about that. We'll be ready to wear. So fingers crossed I'll get a bit of time this weekend to get that finished because she's, it's a nice, it's not, it's not like the lawn cotton I used on my um, vintage shirt dress. This is a bit of a heavier, it's a heavier dress cotton. And so it's, it'll be nice to wear in the autumn, I think. Um, not with this sweater, I think this is just gonna be a bit too busy, but a little top, a little cardigan. Actually an Andy Sutherland style cardigan over this, because this is quite a 50s style. And I think, again, um, a slightly cropped, deep ribbing cardigan with this would look fabulous. Oh, that's got me thinking now. Not that I can cast on anything else at the moment, but anyhow, yes, Betty dress. Right, I'm going to put her away, just a sec. Okay, I'm back. I have um, taken a sweater off, because actually I was getting a bit warm, and obviously let my hair down, gotta let your hair down. So I'm gonna move swiftly on to some more knitting um, that I wanted to talk to you about. I was just gonna show you some progress on the Courage Shawl that I've been working on. Now what I tend to do this time of year, and I don't know if anybody else does this or if it's just me, <laughs> um, but if I've got projects that I want to get done by a deadline, and obviously this time of year, we're talking about Christmas presents, I have a look at how much I need to do, how long I've got to knit them, and then I divide it up. And so I end up with perhaps um, two rows a day, or five rows a week, or um, you know five rounds a day, whatever it is that I'm knitting. And I know that if I do that each day, it's not gonna take a huge amount of time out of my day, especially now I'm a little bit more occupied. Um, but I know that over the next six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, whatever, I'm going to get that project done and it doesn't take away my enjoyment from it but it does help me structure my making so that I get done the things that I want to get done 
and that's what I'm doing with the Courage Shawl. So if you remember from last week, this is a, a long-standing whip that I picked up and I only have a black and white picture, so I do apologise. Um, I picked this up, oh my goodness, I don't know when I cast this on. So that's the shawl. It's by um, Barry Shannon, Shannon Cook, who's a Canadian designer. And I'm making this for a friend for Christmas. And it is uh, knit in... Um, I think I said, did I say worsted weight? I think it is a worsted weight because I'm using a uh, Brooklyn Tweed Shelter and Camarose Llama and Wool Blend. So, there's, that's where we are. That's the shawl. And you can see uh, down here, where is it there? I use one of my lovely Tree of Life um, progress keepers last week to show where I was and you can see now I've done two more sections down here so it's growing now with this it is quite a big it's quite a big baby this it's going to be beautiful it's so soft I cannot tell you how soft it is um, I have got I worked out that I had something like 71 71 rows to do. It's a bit like when you do a mystery shawl knit along. You get so many rows each week, don't you, before the pattern comes out. I had 71, so I worked out that if I did two rows a day, which isn't really much, you know, when I'm sit, sitting and having my, oh, it's upside down, my morning cup of tea, then, you know, in less than six weeks, this would be finished. So, yeah, really pleased with that. I think it's going to be so pretty. I'm seriously thinking of putting tassels on it, a fringe on it as well, because I think it's it's that kind of textural thing. So yeah, that's my progress on the Courage Shawl. I talked about that at length last week, so I'm not going to talk loads about it now. Then I have a new cast on. I'm not going to show you any other whips. I do want to show you another new cast on though, or another project, which is a new cast on. Another small one. This is a pair of gloves and it is from the Harry Potter Knitting Magic book which has been collected together and edited by Tannis Gray and she has put, I don't think, they're not all her patterns I don't think, I believe I'm right in saying that she has simply, yeah, she has put, just put the different um, patterns together in a collection but it's oh it's a lovely book if you haven't got it um it actually oh, can I kind of show you a flick through it so it's got pictures from the film and patterns all sorts and there's all sorts there's toys there's accessories there's a shawl there's scarves in fact the scarf is one that lovely Ellie Craft House <laughs> Craft House Magic Ellie um, has recently finished the scarf in here. And she's a better woman than I am. Where is it? Where is the one? Uh, inspired apparel, jump at scarf. The Wizarding Transportation Scarf Ellie has just made. Um, a couple of podcasts back, she showed this off. And she made this, that one. So that's the one that Ellie has just made. I'm not quite so bold. There's a couple of jumpers in here that I am going, or I'm planning to make. Hannah wants one of the, the classic Harry Christmas sweaters with the H on the front, um, but maybe. But what I am making are the Luna Lovegood Spectra Specs gloves. Let me show you the picture. There. So anyone who watched my vlog last year will probably remember that I bought the yarn. I got the yarn. Um, for these, they call for it calls for four ply um, fingering weight yarn. The the thing that I don't like about this, oh, this pattern is by Stephanie Lopvin, who I know the name, her Ravelry name. I'm sure it's she's the lady who did the the sweater with the stripy sock sleeves, and I can't think her name escapes me at the moment. 
Um, the only thing is, she doesn't, she only says a skein of yarn or two skeins of yarn. She doesn't give you yarn weights because we all know that for gloves, you don't need 100 grams of yarn. So I found that a bit frustrating because I didn't want to buy indie dyed yarn in one, two, three different colours for a pair of gloves. So I bought some, some big box yarn actually that I thought would be perfect in those colours, so in the teal and in the pink with a grey for the main colour. And when I bought it, it was blooming well under the uh, fingering weight section, I think it was on Love Crafts, and I got it home and it's sport weight, it's not fingering weight at all and it's too thick, it is simply too thick for these gloves. In any event, the person I'm knitting them for has small hands so I know they won't fit it. Oh, yeah, it's Hannah. Hannah doesn't watch this. She watches the beginning and then skips through all the knitting stuff <laughs> so I can talk about these. So um, I've been ugh, umming and ahhing about these for ages. Anyway, I bit the bullet this week and I have cast them on. So I have my Mrs. Moo Christmas project bag because, you know, it's a Christmas project and I feel it was reasonable to get a Christmas project bag out. So that's Mrs. Moog, M-O-O-G. She's on Instagram and has an Etsy shop. I love her project bags. They are just amazing. So I have opted to use the good old um, Drops Alpaca 4-ply in cream. So this is my background colour. And then I pulled a couple of mini skeins from a set that I bought from Bryony from Spectrum Fibre. Um, oh, not long ago actually, and I pulled out those two, you can see those can't you, I've realised I don't have to bring them really really close to the camera, I don't know what I'm doing with that, there you go, um, and I decided I would use those as the contrast on one glove, see how that knits up and then decide what contrast to use on the second one, but all the time doing on a palette, on a, a cream palette. So I love this. I made, uh, those of you might remember, year before last, I made some sheet mittens and I used the Drops Up Aca 4 ply. It's fabulous, it's great, and it's really budget friendly as well. So the main colour of my first glove is going to be this beautiful one. And because they were minis, I haven't got the name of it, but oh my goodness, these colours. Bryony is an amazing dyer. And this is the progress I have made. So let me, I'm on DPNs because I find knitting mittens, I'm a bit tired of, a um, bit bored of Magic Loop at the moment. There you go. I don't want to come too much closer because I don't want to poke your eye out. Let's put that thing. There, can you see that? Oh, my bad, excuse me a moment. Where's my phone? That was a timer to tell me half an hour's up. I'm meant to be, I'm meant to be shorter than this. So, there you go. So the two, the contrast colour, so my main colour is this bottom one, and then it's a corrugated rib and the rib, the corrugated colour I have done in the speckled cream. And then I've dropped the speckled cream and I'm now just working on the bright purple yarn together with the drops. And you're beginning to see, if you look here, and you look there, you can see there's some circles that start. Um, ah, there you go. So if you then look at this, you can actually see there the circles beginning. My hesitation was that using a variegated yarn in colour work can either be fantastic or it can be a disaster, but I think looking at this, this is going to work really well and then I can choose the other mini for the second glove once I've done this one because I want them to be contrasting like those. So that's that, the Luna Lovegood Spectre, what are they called? Spectre Specs, Spectre Specs gloves. 
So they have got as their gloves, so they have got fingers. But I'm hoping to get some of the special thread that you can I can knit into the fingertips so that Hannah can still, for goodness sake, use her phone. God forbid that you can't instantly text or ring somebody. That's not true because I'd be like that, to be honest. And then you can just see, it's a really nice detail. If you can see there, I've got two stitch markers where the thumb gusset is starting to develop. And you increase the stitches with the contrasting colour. So the you've still got a pattern on the thumb. These are totally colour worked all the way through the palm and the, the back of the hand and also the thumb gusset, but you get the two, the increases are done in the contrasting colour, which is in that. But yeah, so I'm really, really excited about these. They're a lovely little knit. I do like knitting gloves and mittens. Um, these are on 3.25 millimetre DPNs. I've picked out my old Knit Pro DPNs for these. Um, the cuff is done on 2.75s. I'm doing it as as written so I've not done a swatch because you know it's gloves so if I have to pull it out and redo it then that's fair enough but the size is looking pretty good at the moment and obviously being colour work it's going to come up a little bit smaller my colour work isn't too tight but I am allowing for it to come up a little bit smaller Hannah has small hands so her hands are a little bit smaller than mine so I think that will work quite nicely so that's probably all I'm going to share with you this week. That's three things. That's reasonable, isn't it? Now, as I said before, we have the Ravelry group, uh, the Sheep and Cheerful Ravelry group, really active, really fantastic group. If you're not already uh, a member, if you're on Ravelry, do jump in and introduce yourself in the introductory thread. And if you're already a member of the group, do pop in and look at the thread, that thread from time to time and welcome in. Um, new friends and new crafters because it's always nice to extend that welcome to people. I've been on Ravelry today. I've tried to get up to date with most of the replies as I have done with the YouTube comments. So hopefully everybody's had a reply there. Um, it has been a crazy couple of weeks. So what's the dog going out again? Um, I, I've been a bit behind. I have closed the thread for the... Um, I finished my make along, but I'm not actually going to pull the winners for this week because I've just a little bit pushed for time this week. I really wanted to get a podcast up, so I thought rather than delay it, um, I've closed the thread, but I will be pulling prizes this week and next week I will be giving the final bell to those who I haven't given the bell to yet. Um, and I will be announcing the prizes for that. So that's really exciting. So that's finished. We've still got the Scrappy Blanket Make Along going along, which is an ongoing one. Do jump into that. There's all sorts of new blanket um, minis and DKs. I believe um, Cherie was telling me that uh, Tracy Nora Georgian is starting a new Harry Potter blanket club. If anybody wants to go and check that out, I haven't looked yet. I didn't look on Tracy's shop because her yarns are just beautiful. Um, or scrappy blankets, you know, I'm kind of, I don't mind if it's not truly a scrappy blanket. Scrappy blankets are great, but if you're making a blanket and you are casting on a new one or you are less than 50% of the way through your current one, just jump in, jump in with it. You've got to love, let's have some blanket love. Let's just share all the blankets. That's what I say. Speaking of which, I have sent my last um, alchemy blanket. Really? Are you going to settle down? Or are you just going to walk around? Hello. He says, Mum, honey, got on the screen last week. Come on, come and see me then. Come and say hello. No? You want to come up? Come on. Honey, got up last week. So Henry wants to get up this week. Oh, my boy. There. What were we saying? Blankets. You like blankets, don't you? And Honey loves blankets. Say hello to everybody. Jay. Jay. Uh, oh, hello, everybody. Now, he's actually thinking that I've got food on the table. Talk about heart in his stomach, isn't it, eh? Uh, yes, yeah, so we've got the scrappy blanket make-along in the Ravelry group. 
we have the share and pray section please don't be shy about if you if you want to share any kind of testimonies about your faith or if you need prayer or you would like just people to put some prayers up for people you love do go on there that is strictly moderated so you know i appreciate people you know maybe opening up a little bit or feeling a bit vulnerable i will make sure that I, I mean, I can't see that there would be anything unpleasant. We have such a lovely group. I only get them. But obviously, I also appreciate and respect the fact that people might be talking about things that are very, very dear to them. So I will just be keeping an eye on that anyway. Uh, we have an Advent swap going on, I believe. Um, lovely Amanda, who's running that. She's got a thread going for that. And I believe that, date is that, that uh, group is now closed for entries although if you're desperate i'm sure if you messaged amanda she might be able to squeeze you in she'll probably kill me for saying that um but if you um are joining that well done start rolling those advents for your little swaps that you're going to be doing and very quickly i just wanted to announce the next knit along or the next make along and i have completely come empty-handed just one second Okay, so the new make-along has to be about Christmas, doesn't it? It has to be. So this is going to be running, should we say up to the beginning of December? Or should we say, I tell you what, we'll run it up to my wedding anniversary, which is the 12th of December. So I am going to put that down there to 12th of December. I will have been married 28 years be a cause for celebration won't it and we are going to have a Christmas bauble along so that is going to be the new make along now I mentioned before we had a long chat about Arnie and Carlos I have this this book the 55 Christmas balls to knit but I'm also aware that these aren't now the only bauble patterns around I will be making mine from here my Christmas bauble along and I'm going to aim to make one bauble a month because I have other things going on. So I'm going to get September, October, November. Yeah, I'm going to make four Christmas baubles for my Christmas tree this year. Each year I make a few and I'm getting quite a nice collection now. So I'm going to aim to make four Christmas baubles. Excuse me, that's Hannah texting me. Okay, once again, Hannah is out and she's buying some shopping, some food shopping for me. So, you know important stuff going on there yes Christmas baubles so my tree is slowly getting more and more baubles each year come December when we get the Christmas decorations down from the loft so I can't show you now I will be able to show you my collection of knitted baubles but for now take my word for it this is a great book it's not new so if you want to buy it um, you'll probably be able to pick it up on from some second-hand bookshops or um, even probably, I mean, even new, oh, it's got 12 99 here, but I think it's cheaper than that now because this is a good few years old. But the sort of, um, let me show you a picture on here. I'm also aware that I'm not supposed to be waff, waffling, waffling on. Oh, there you go. They're the sort of baubles we're talking about. Now, a lot of them are in cream and red but there's some that are there's one that I've made as well that I also added in a green so that one there um, they're all the same design so once you get used to making one it's just following the color work pattern if not if you don't want to make a bauble then I will expand the um, the definition of bauble for this knit along or this crochet no this make along because there are some brilliant crochet bauble patterns out there um, I also have this book by Sue Stratford mini Christmas knits that I picked up a few years ago in one of my local uh, my local uh, Kloss and Hamblin but it's search press they have loads of these um, and you can certainly get them on Amazon if not in the little um, bookshops uh, in independent bookshops and they have got stars, there's a Christmas tree, a heart. This, I've made this, these tiny sweaters to hang on your Christmas tree. How fabulous are they? Um, 
and there's a wreath. Uh, there is, <laughs> there's a reindeer and a snowman and a very dodgy looking robin. Um, I've also made a bauble as a Christmas pudding. So there's this book as well. So I'll put the details down in the, the description box. There's loads out there. There's loads of free patterns on Ravelry as well, if you can get onto Ravelry. But we will be running this now. Hmm. Here's the thing. I really want to include people who can't go on Ravelry or have difficulty using Ravelry at the moment, either because they have a difficulty with the um, user interface or simply because they're not you're not techie minded because you don't want to use Ravelry for your own personal reasons. So we will run this through Instagram as well. So if you want to join in the um, Christmas ball ball along, then just a second. Okay, so forgive me, I'm back. That was <laughs> more phone interruptions. Sorry about that. Yes, so let's make, we're going to launch this on Instagram as well as on Ravelry. So I will be pulling um, at the end of the, the bauble along um, December the 12th, I'll close, I'll close the Ravelry thread. I'll pull all the people off um, Instagram who've used the hashtag, which I will tell you in a moment. And I will pull all the people from the Ravelry chatter thread and I will draw winners from those. So you can join in. Please, please do feel free to jump in on Instagram. Um, you can add, um, I think, on Instagram to make it easier. Would it be too complicated? Right, the hashtag we're going to use is Christmas Bauble Along. I will put it down in the... Um, you know, that thing down there. I'll also do an Instagram post with the hashtag there as well. So Christmas bauble along. So, um, and I'll put it along the screen. Just make sure you spell that properly. I will follow that, um, that hashtag. So, um, and then when you finished, can I suggest you do Christmas bauble along FO? And then I can pull all the FOs um, at the end, it'll make life a little bit easier than me just pulling them all and having to sort out which are the FOs. So whilst you're making, we'll have the Christmas bauble along and when you've finished, it'll be the Christmas bauble along FO. like to make a mouthful of it for you. If you are on Ravelry um, and you want to join the chatter thread but you also want to post on Instagram, that's absolutely fine. I can, I can weed out any duplicate entries so don't worry about that too much. And I will open the thread this afternoon. We can get cracking, get started making your Christmas baubles. And I think they need to be hangy ones. So they need to be able to hang on a tree or on a door handle or on a hook or something like that. So rather than making a big Christmas big thing for this particular make along, we're gonna have um, a, hangy, a hangy bauble, but it can be it can be knitting, crochet, quilting, sewing, anything like that. I'm more than happy for you to throw your hat into the ring with that. And let's see how many baubles we can get onto our trees and into our homes this December. And they'll be sheep and cheerful baubles. So they will bring joy and love and happiness. Because I say so. <laughs> Right, oh my goodness, I'm sure I've not talked about loads of things that um, I usually talk about. I had a book review already here to do, but I'm going to stop now because I do have to get on with some study as well as um, obviously get this edited and get this up tomorrow. So um, that's about it from me. I haven't, I obviously haven't talked about my my schoolwork because I've only just started. So give me a few weeks to get my head around that but it's all looking very exciting. And life in general is okay. We're all doing all right. As I say, Jonah is back now. Next week, he's back out on the ambulances. So if you live in the South Central area and you are unfortunate enough to have to call an ambulance, then you never know, you may get my son coming to attend. Hannah starts her course in a couple of weeks. She's chomping at the bit to start, especially now I'm starting to do all my stuff. And Gary's is okay. Um, 
continued prayers um, for him would be appreciated because obviously his um, our challenges with him and his illness are long term but we're doing good the good lord is smiling down on us at the moment so all is well so i will finish up now by saying um obviously goodbye i hope you have had a lovely week i hope you have a great week ahead i hope that if you're in the northern hemisphere you're starting to dip your toes in the feeling of autumn and those lovely crisp sort of uh, pumpkin filled mornings that we're getting if you're in the southern hemisphere then obviously you are starting to see signs of spring. You are starting to see the daffodils come up. You do have daffodils, don't you, in the Southern Hemisphere? I'm sure you must do. Anyway, the spring flowers and the sunnier mornings. So it's all change, isn't it? Do you know the study of seasons is called phrenology? Phenology, not phrenology. My bad. Um, that's the study of the changing seasons. So we are in a phenological that is right, isn't it? Let me double check before I go, because otherwise I'm going to be really frustrated if I get that wrong. I'm pretty sure um, that it is, it is phenology, the study of the cyclic and seasonal natural phenomena, especially in relation to climate, plant and animal life. So we're coming into one of those changes at the moment. So... Uh, yes, have a lovely week, keep safe, stay cheerful, and do we want to be more sheep? That's over to you. Cheerio!